Hello game developers, welcome to episode 16. In this episode we are creating the button prefab that we need in our um, main user interface to pause the game. Also I'm going to show you how you can create this button prefab so that you can use it in any other Phaser 3 game that you're currently working on. Before we start coding, I need to say thank you. Huge, huge thank you to David and DevRookie for becoming my first two backers ever on Patreon. And also thank you to all the people who have been leaving these positive and kind comments in the last weeks. It means so much to me. And especially again, big, big thank you to my new backers. You guys are amazing and it means so much to me to know that I can continue doing this. Alright, so in the last episode, if you remember, I tried to use the button prefab, but it didn't exist yet. So in this episode we are creating the button prefab and I will do it in such a way that you can use this prefab in any other Phaser 3 game right now. We don't even have a file yet, so let's go into our prefabs folder and create a new JavaScript file for the button prefab. As for all prefabs in this game, we are using the JavaScript class object to create the button prefab. When we think about all the things we want our button to do, we come up with a list of arguments that we pass to the constructor. So first of all, we need to pass a reference to the scene in which the button is created. Then we need to give the button a position in the coordinate system, the X and Y position. Also, we pass the button a key, which is the key of the image file that the button will use. And it needs a callback. Uh, method obviously because when we click the button we want to execute some kind of method or function. Finally if your button is uh, like a general image that you want to write different labels on top of it we can pass it a string to add a label on top of the button. If you want your button to have a click animation or a hover animation you need to define the different frames for each of these states. I like to use all three states by default so that the button has an, uh, an out frame, an over frame and a down frame, but you could always overwrite this for your own button image files. And finally, we initialize the button's origin and we initialize all the phaser objects that this button uses to display. Sometimes I like to put my initialization methods in a separate subsection and we start out with the init origin method. I'm building this method so that I can also use it at a later point to always change the origin of an existing button. So that's how we can pass it an origin argument and then the method will check if there are different origin values for the X and Y uh, parts of the button or if we use the same value for both coordinates and finally if there's no value given at all we always default to a center position. What matters the most here is that the method will always return an object with the origins x and y values. Now let's look at the init objects method. This method will always return the phaser objects which is a sprite for the button image and a text object for the label of the button if we define a text for the label. So first we create the button sprite with the create sprite method and important is that here we save the width and height of the button. Then next we check if we provided the button with a string for the label text. If we have one, we create a text object and else we set it to false. For the label text, we've already done the hard work in our text prefab, but for the sprite, we need to create the create sprite method. And not only do we need to create the button sprite, we also need to make it interactive so that we can click it. Thanks to phaser 3, we can create the interaction quite easily. We call the sprites set interactive method. And then with the on method, we can define different events that will trigger different callback methods. The pointer over event is when you hover over the button. The pointer down event is when you click down the button. And the pointer out event is when you release the button. Let's create a subsection specifically for these callback handlers. And we start out with the handle out method. So generally, when we think about these callback methods, we think about what do we want our button to do? What kind of interaction do we want to offer? For most of these callback methods, it's actually just changing the 
frame of the button sprite sheet to visually give the player feedback, hey, you're hovering the button, you're holding down the button, or you're not even on top of the button at all. In this tutorial series we're creating a mobile game, so the hover event, the over event is not really relevant, but as I said, I want to create this prefab so you can use it in any other Phaser 3 game of yours, so that's why I'm creating the, the hover event as well. And now comes the most important part of all these callback handlers, the handle up method. So when the player releases the button, this is the moment when you want to execute the callback method. A lot of people when starting out, they put it into the down event. So when you click the button, when you press down, but that can bring a lot of different problems in your game, depending on where the finger is or where the mouse is when you hold the button down and what appears next on that position. If there's another button that also reacts to the down event, you could be triggering two or even three buttons with one click, just because they're all at the exact same position on your interface and they're all reacting to the down event. So that's the reason why for almost all UI scenarios, you will want to execute the callback method in the up event, so in the handle up callback method. And let's not forget, every time we create something, we also want to give the possibility to destroy it. So in our destroy method, we just check, does the element exist? If it does, destroy it. So now we can create buttons with the prefab, but when looking at our play scene, we see that actually we need some setter methods as well to make this button part of the UI. So we jump back into our button prefab file and we create a subsection for all the setters. The first setter method is the set depth method. And all these methods, they will follow a very similar structure. We take the sprite object, which is a phaser 3 object, and we use the phaser 3 method set depth. Then we check if we have a label defined, if we have a text label on this button, if there is one, we also must update the depth value for the text object. And as I said, the logic is the same thing for the set scroll factor method. We do it for the button sprite and then we check if we have a text object and same thing for the set scale method. What's important in the set scale method is as the scale is changing the size of the button, we also need to update the width and height values in our prefab. And now back in our play scene file, let's uncomment the code where we used the button prefab and we remove the code where we used the sprite as a placeholder. And when we refresh the browser window to check it, of course there's an error. And this is a very common error, that's why I'm showing it here. Don't forget, every time you create a new file, we must include it in our index.html file. And if you thought that it works now, no, still doesn't work. There is another error, also very important error. In the, the previous episodes where we created prefabs, I mentioned that we need to create a bunch of getters and setters. And here is a good reason for you to see why we need that. Phaser 3 objects have a lot of very useful methods. For example, here on sprites, you have the get top right method. This allows you to get the coordinates of the top right corner of that sprite. However, our button, it's not anymore a phaser 3 sprite, it's now our custom button prefab. But we still want to be able to use it like a phaser object or like a phaser sprite. So that's why we create these getter methods ourselves. I hope this shows you the value in creating a lot of these setters and getter methods. And for example, when we think about our button, we also want to have a lot more setter methods. For example, we want to be able to change the text of the button's label if we have one with the set text method. This way you could change the text on your buttons in the game depending on certain circumstances. Other useful methods are the set X method to change the X coordinate of the button or the set Y method to do the same thing with the Y coordinate. Then also maybe you want to change the width or the height of your button with set width or set height. Finally, two other very commonly used setters are the set alpha method to change the transparency of your button and very important, the set visible method so you can completely hide your button. So with the setters completed for now, let's look at the getters. Probably the getter method I use the most is the getCenter method 
which returns the center coordinate of the button sprite. Second to that are the methods that return the coordinates of the four corners of the sprite. In our case, we use the get top right method to get the coordinates of the top right corner of the button sprite so that we can calculate the distance from the pause button to the hearts on the user interface showing the player health. At first sight, looking at setters and getters is probably a boring topic, but I hope that now when you understand the value of having good getters and setters, how much easier it is to handle your prefabs in your other game code, I hope it gets you a little excited for thinking about this part of the code. And refreshing your browser window for a button can be a humbling experience because it's not as spectacular as like collision or enemies, but our button is there, it works perfectly, and now you have a prefab that you can use in any of your Fraser 3 games to create more of these buttons. Right now, clicking the pause button does nothing, and it's the next episode where we make this pause button useful by actually pausing the game. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you liked this episode, please give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, and leave your questions in the comments below, and please follow me on Twitter if you're not